let's take a look of the actual challenging part in uh, 5.4. So the main idea I think uh, why IB Physics introduced this to you is uh, we want to combine the concept that we learned in this chapter and also circular motion as I mentioned before. So uh, this video is more talking about uh, when the charged particle getting into the magnetic field and they are performing circular motion. So right here, you can see there's a diagram showing you uh, how it looks like when it is performing circular motion. Uh, note that, as I said in the previous video, the force is changing right, whenever uh, the charged particle is moving around. And because of uh, the direction of the movement is changing, it changes the current as well. So if you try to use your left hand rule to figure it out, uh, you should be able to understand this. Um, Notice one thing is that uh, for this charged particle, you should be able to deduce whether or not this is positive charge or negative charge. So maybe I'll give you a, a, this as a challenge. Can you tell me is this a positive charge or negative charge? Pause the video and I'll get back to you. Okay, so first of all, when you look at this diagram, uh, you should Firstly, realize that F must be true. I mean, the ultimate thing that uh, makes positive and negative different is uh, the, the direction of the movement uh, would determine whether it's the same direction as I or opposite. So let's say if you try to use your left hand rule, so FBI, F is pointing to in this direction so you should use your form and B which is the background which is uh, going into the paper and you should find that I is going in this direction also in this case since I and V is in the same they are in the same direction then this one must be positive charge okay so it must be a positively charged particles for example proton instead of electron in the diagram uh, below here then you will be able to see a very complicated strange uh, situation and in fact it's very simple think about this when you are performing a circular motion with the charged particle like this on the plane so like this one uh, it will keep turning and by the way this is how the CERN if you if you heard about that um, which is the Hedron Collider uh, where scientists want to study more about the particle physics they want to see what is inside the neutron and proton and therefore they build a circular uh, well actually there's a linear one but uh, actually the most useful one is the circular one because you can always accelerate the charged particle uh, for example proton inside until a very very high speed and then they let them to collide to each other but for linear you can't actually let them keep going you can only go from one place to another place but anyway what I'm trying to say here is, uh, since you're performing the circular motion, imagine uh, in in this diagram, like the diagram we just talked about, it is x and y direction. Then x is more like going horizontal, y is going uh, vertical in this diagram, and actually there's a z direction, which is our paper or into paper. So imagine uh, there is also an initial speed for this particle. So not only uh, along this, this direction, but also there's a C direction, which is uh, our paper into paper. Then uh, other than just performing the circular motion, it will also gradually perform a spiral path that is uh, moving along this. So normally, if you have a constant B view, then it will be more like this, right? You have a constant radius I didn't draw very well but uh, it's supposed to be a constant radius throughout and the reason why there is somehow a larger radius and then a smaller radius is something to do with the B field itself so maybe the B field is a bit weaker or stronger and that would change the radius and that's why we have to link the idea uh, to the quantitative side by doing some more deduction on the equation so let me show you here, or if you like to do it, uh, you can try to deduce the equation by yourself up to this spot. Right, T is the period. So I think uh, the textbook is not 
you know showing very well at the beginning I think I would want to show you a more primitive equation as in um, from what we start usually uh, as a base which is guess what F equals MA and since the force here is the magnetic force um, causing the charge to move and we learned it in uh, the previous video that is BVQ uh, there's no sign here because uh, the b apparently is simply perpendicular to the plane of the movement so that's why the sine theta you can just uh, imagine that is 90 degrees simply always and as for the acceleration because now we are actually talking about circular motion so you can actually say centripetal force and centripetal acceleration and if you recall what you learned in chapter 6 and that will be v squared over r so in fact uh, you may actually say hey there's actually more equation than v squared over r yes so depending on the situation you may want to use other equation uh, but let's say uh, the more usual way that we do is using this one and then you may deduce that since the v will cancel out then uh, you may say hey r equals to m o uh, m v over b times q yeah i think that's that's what you could do so that means uh, if you try to interpret uh, how the radius will change so when there's a shorter radius or longer radius there are several things it would uh, depends on one is of course the mass but apparently in this case uh, it's the same particle so the mass doesn't change the velocity uh, it could be depending on when it's entering into the uh, the field uh, or it could be related to the B field uh, situation like whenever maybe at this region it has a stronger B field or we could be field here so uh, if you try to think about B field then you can imagine if B field is stronger then radius is uh, shorter as if you have a stronger force then you can turn you can change the direction more rapidly as for the charge it will be also the same if you have a stronger charge then apparently the force is stronger then the radius will also be shorter again since the force is uh, stronger in this case in the textbook uh, they want to somehow relate it to the period and therefore uh, you would need to use the equation of t, uh, period t equals to 2 pi r over v or uh, you can uh, use the other equation in chapter 6 is again really up to you what you replace with the centripetal acceleration and you should be able to find the relevant stuff uh, that the question is asking you right now I want you to uh, try the question here so there are two examples here pause the video try it now we'll explain that later on okay so first of all uh, part A is asking you to justify why it is positive charge I think similar to the uh, previous part I mentioned what you have to do is uh, look at the direction so what you can say about is uh, since I'm not going to write down so I think I'll just say it to you and you can write that if you want uh, the B field is going in so you are using your flaming left hand rule remember and so uh, this is going in for B field and uh, you can see the force when it enter the B field is going to the left because apparently you can see the path uh, this is how it looks like so at the beginning it's going to the left and so in that case the i that you find out is actually going forward or right? going uh, upward you may say and since this is uh, the direction of the, the this charge particle also and that means this must be a positive charge in this case all right so that means if something that maybe if it turn the other way around then that should be uh, electron instead but in this case it will be a positive charge okay uh, part b it asks you that uh, in fact the proton has a mass so this is the m given and this is the q given uh, and then they also give you b calculate the radius of the circular path so basically this is what uh, I just showed you earlier using F equals MA to deduce uh, remember in the data booklets uh, there is only the equation of F equals to B VQ and BIL there isn't an equation to tell you how to relate these two in terms of circular motion so uh, you really have to learn how to relate them by using the idea of Newton's second law so like what I'm trying to show you here so again F is bvq here and then uh, a 
centripetal acceleration is V squared over R and then V will cancel out on each side one, one V only and then you can uh, write the R as the main term so M V over B Q and then I suppose you just have to substitute uh, everything inside so mass you have given velocity is it given oh I remember this question sorry um, I should have remind you that for velocity uh, it this is not a very good question that they somehow you can't actually calculate part B without the information from part C so um, you simply have to use the velocity because if you don't have velocity you can't calculate radius since there are two unknown here so you have to borrow the information from part C and B is also given and charge this is already in coulomb so this is great and so in this case you just have to press the calculator as what I usually do I would firstly uh, calculate the numbers without the order of magnitude and then uh, which I get 21.71 and then I would deal I would deal with uh, the order of magnitude by simply uh, doing negative 27 plus 6 and then plus 19 and so I get negative 12 here and then you can uh, further you know make it nicer that you can change it to I think 2.171 times 10 to the power of negative 1 in this case all right and then that is uh, in meter as for part C try to get more space here as for part C it asks you about the, about the proton time that it needs to uh, spend in the region in this magnetic field uh, I think we have to assume it oh it's already mentioned here which you have to pay attention it said it has gone through for a quarter of the circle so what you have to do simply apparently is that you want to find the period and but for period it is one cycle right so basically one circle so you just have to multiply the period by a quarter to find the actual time so um, since you already find the radius I think the easiest way is uh, you can relate the time or the velocity as in 2 pi r over time period right which is a distance over time equals to velocity yeah and so uh, you already got the velocity which is from the question part c and then 2 pi r is what we find out earlier over t and so you should be able to find t as 2.6 times 10 to the power of negative 7 seconds and then what you need to do next is so the actual time for this path uh, is t times a quarter so divide 4 basically 6.558 or simply 6.5 6.6 how about that 10 to the power of negative 8 second this is how you do this question if you're okay with that uh, try to take a look of the next question this is a very interesting question pause the video now my hint for this question, if you don't know how to do it, is that uh, you have to determine um, two things, direction of the motion and the sign. I would say you should determine uh, the direction first. So that means it's either going from right to the left or left to the right. All right, And you need to think about uh, what happened when it hits the metal foil. And my hint is that uh, when it hits the metal foil, there will be some energy lost. Energy lost as in when it's moving, there's kinetic energy, but when it hits the foil, part of its energy is transferred to the foil and therefore you lose the energy. So if you um, want to do it further by yourself, try to pause the video now and try to work on it. 
Okay, so first of all, uh, I think, like I said, you have to determine the direction of the motion first. So whether or not it go from here, from right to left or left to right. So the first thing you need to see from the diagram is that it's radius. So the radius of this and the radius of this is different. So let's say R1 and R2. Apparently R1 is shorter than R2. And what you have to think about is since there's energy loss, that means velocity will be less, will be reduced in this case. And so uh, would, would they have a greater radius or longer radius? And to deduce that, again, you should recall uh, what we have deduced earlier. You can or you can deduce it again. Um, for simplicity, I will just borrow from my previous um, deduction, which is R equals to mv BQ, right? And if you try to look at this equation once again, uh, you should realize that uh, M doesn't change, B doesn't change, and Q doesn't change because this is simply constant in this situation. And only if V is changing, causing R will change. And that also means if velocity decreases when it hits the foil, radius would also decrease. And so that means apparently uh, this is what happened later because radius here is less with less velocity, so less radius. So now we have figured out the direction of the motion is actually going from right to the left and then going onwards. And the next thing is uh, to determine the sign of the charge. Uh, once you figure out this direction, then you can figure it out. So that actually means if you don't figure this thing out first, there's no way you can know the sign because there are two possibilities. So right now, since you know um, the charge at the beginning is actually moving in this direction, so let's take this as velocity. And then this is the force direction. And then the B field is going into paper. So once again, use your flaming left hand rule, F, B, I, and you should find the I. Uh, is going up in this case and again since V and I is going in the same direction then this must be a positively charged particle all right so that means it could be a proton for example this indeed would be a very interesting question